All right. So what was your immediate thoughts after the Green Bay loss? Like, obviously, we were all destroyed about it. Um, but for you personally, what were your thoughts? I mean, obviously, as y'all know, we were extremely, extremely disappointed. You know, I think the, the worst thing for us was, you know, as we fought through the year, like, you know, we did so much. We did stuff that's probably, you know, never, you know. It's such a historic happen. season, really. Such a historic season. You know, we had did so many good things, and um, it just felt like we just kind of, I wouldn't say burned out, but we just really didn't get a chance to get started. And, uh, you know, it's hard to, you know, it's kind of, it's hard to go back. Hindsight is always 2020. You'll look at the tape and you'll be like, damn, we could have been better here. We could have been better there. But I think what we really learned was just, you know, this thing isn't forever. Like, you know, when we ended that Packers game, you know, Tyler Biotis, you know, Tyron Smith, Dorrance Armstrong, Dante Fowler, and, you know, uh, a plethora of other guys where, you know, our teammates. TP, are, yep. TP, Tony Pollard. You know what I'm saying? It's just so many guys who, who you know, who are our teammates, our brothers that we grinded with. And, you know, you got to be thankful for that time because for as for the time being, you know, those aren't our teammates anymore. We don't get to, yep. you know, go back to the drawing board and, you know, discuss how we're going to win it all with those guys. So I think it was just hard. Um, it was just hard to see, you know, how talented we were and how much we could have done and just see that know, all kind of go away. Like, I, I'm with you 100%. Good people, it's your boy Mr. Rome, Cowboys Fan Talk, right back. Like I never left, what's up with y'all, man? How are y'all feeling? Y'all all right? Y'all hold in there? Look, draft getting closer. Actually something for the Cowboys fans to be positive and happy about, if they do it right. But look, <laughs> look do me a favor, man. If you want to join the team, do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button. Hit that like, that share. I appreciate the support. We're heading towards 25K. We almost at 24,100. We close. So if you want to join the team, you go ahead and hit that um, hit that button. Um, Listen, I caught this little tidbit. You know I'm always perusing the Cowboys streets. And I came across Tyler Smith. Now, shout out to Brock Hoffman. Um, got that clip from Brock Hoffman and his podcast, Brock Hoffman out here doing his work, he being multifaceted. He like, he like, listen, if the Cowboys don't give me my start, I'm going to start. I'm going to do a podcast. I'm going to do whatever I need to do. And I'll talk about him in a second. I want to touch on what Tyler Smith was just talking about first. Look, he touched on the Green Bay game and how that was a heartbreak. And we've been saying this all offseason. That thing has had us on the ropes, on the mat, frustrated, hurt. As a fan base, as a record label, a staff. <laughs> no, but that's how I feel like. Everybody in Cowboys Nation or affiliated with Cowboys Nation has been hurt. And, you know, talking about it from a player perspective was good to hear or just it was interesting to hear. You know, talking about how, you know, they was disappointed. They they, they felt like they got clipped before they got started. And they felt like it was a wasted season because they felt like they built real good momentum and we was heading in the right direction. And it's a lesson in realizing if you don't come with your A game, if you half step, it's over. For a young player like Tyler Smith starting to, you know, being in the league, I think he's going into his third year, it's starting to become a reality like it did for Micah and everybody else on this team that's young. Hey, man, this thing ain't forever. As he touched on, it's not forever. Players like Dante Fowler, Doris Armstrong, Tony, he disrespected Tony's name, Tony Pollard, Tony Pollard, <laughs> um, Tyler Beatish is his, his, his running mate on the O-line. You'd be like, wow. They gone, you know, because we ain't losing as many players a year before. So it, the reality is set in and it really starts to make you realize how important each season is and don't take a season for granted, especially for those players that went down over Sean Stevens Jr. Like you can lose your your season, Trayvon Diggs, or somebody can be gone next season. You got to really take these things as precious moments and appreciate the locker room that you get built. Now, hopefully our locker room gets some players added to it because we, you know, but we'll talk about that at a later date. Not that later because the draft coming. But I'm just saying, you know, you can't take these things for granted, and I respect that. It was just good to hear from one of our young, young, up-and-coming, all-pro stars. You know, right guard, whether he's at right guard or he's going to be a right tackle. Tyler Smith's voice 
and leadership on this old line is important because Zach Martin's heading out the door. Our best old lineman right now was who was just speaking. And then you got a young gun talking to him on this podcast who wants to get a chance. That's all he's asking for is a chance. Now, look, I'll, 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 I'll touch on this briefly, you know, because ask yourself, is Brock Hoffman... Re- well, before I get to that, I appreciate Tyler Smith just being open and candid. And I think he's going to have a great year this year, whether it's that left tackle or right guard. I just wanted to say that just in case Tyler Smith comes across this video. Just know that I'm behind you and I appreciate you for what you do. But as far as Brock, if he comes across this video, appreciate you Let me get the clip, bro. Um, is he ready? Let me know in the comments. Is Brock Hoffman ready? Because I'm not saying that fan base is split on it. I don't think people are really giving it serious thought. I think the Cowboys are seriously giving it some thought. Now, I don't know if they're using Brock Hoffman as a backup plan or if, they were, if they're if they like, yo, we might be good at center. Because hey. development is a real thing. I know one thing. I love Brock Hoffman's nastiness. He's been putting in work. First of all, he's been putting in work this offseason. Every other day I see a clip of Brock Hoffman putting in that work, grinding. So first of all, I appreciate that. It's it's um it's refreshing. Now, I know Cowboys Nation hates workout videos right now, so that probably angers people, but I'm just saying it's confirmation that he ain't he wants to seize the opportunity. I've heard through black channels, through through anything he's been saying, hey man, I feel like there's an opportunity in front of me. I'm gonna seize it. Last season he played like 220 something snaps. Um most at center, I think like um 150 something at center, like 60 or 70 something at at um left guard. And uh, it was a right guard. It was guard. Uh, and I think that he wants that center position. And he going to grind all offseason. Even if we take a center outside of Powers Johnson, Hoffman wants that spot. He wants that spot. And he's like, look, if it's right guard, if it's center, I want to start. And I haven't seen a video of TJ Bass, but I'm sure he's grinding too. One of those people going to start. One of them going to start. And we're going to have to see. I don't know if we're going to get. We, we might get double linemen in the draft. We never know. But right now, he's trying to seize his opportunity. I want to know how, what you think about it in the comments. Seriously, let me know. Are you just like, no, we need to draft. Brock is not ready. Or if you're like, nah, I see the grind. I respect the grind. And I want to see what he got. Because when he got in the game a couple times, run blocking was incredible to me. That's what I saw. I saw him moving people. Road grader. You know what I'm saying? Now, pass pro, I think he allowed some pressures. Out of those 120-something snaps, I think he did allow like five pressures. No sacks, but like five pressures. So still areas of his game to work on. But I do like that he's locked in and he wants to seize the opportunity. You never know what the drive of somebody trying to attain something, what that does to a person. You know what I'm saying? Just Brock man locked in shows me that, like, let's not assume that every pro athlete, everybody that has opportunity wants to seize it. That's first. Let's just be honest. It's plenty of people that get to certain places and they just rest on their laurels. They don't have the drive or the ambition to really do that. That's why, look, a lot of people be talking to me. I've been getting a lot of comments. People in the DMs, um, you know, paying attention to the comments on Twitter, et cetera, et cetera. Yo, man, I don't even know how you making content when the Cowboys ain't doing nothing. Like, I don't get it. It's negative. You know, everything is angry. The fans is angry. Every time you post any positivity, people get jumped down your back. You know what I'm saying? Um, anything that is actually positive, people don't want to hear it. They don't want to see workout. They don't want to see nothing. I get it. I get it. But like I said, when you want to go get something, like I got drive to be great at this. I got ambition to be great at this. So I'm going to just keep going. And that's what I see in Brock Hoffman. Like, all right. Now, am I saying that we draft another center, he won't have drive or TJ Bass don't got drive? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that if everybody around you got drive, what are you going to do to separate yourself from them? That's what I'm starting to see. Keep putting in that work, Brock. Maybe you'll get your chance. Um, I'm definitely glad you're a part of this team. I think at worst, you'll be an amazing backup. Um, at best, you'll be a starter. But that ain't my decision to make, unfortunately. You know what I'm saying? I just want to say salute to you and your grind. Appreciate the clip from the podcast, man. It's good to hear from our, 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 our potential hogs up front. 
It's your boy, Mr. Rome, man. You let me know in the comments how you feeling about the O-line. What would you want to do in the draft? Do you want to just go ahead and get another center? You want to give Brock a chance? Or do you want to draft a center later in the draft and let them battle it out? Y'all let me know. It's your boy, Mr. Rome. I holler.